Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today, we're gonna take this portrait photo that I got on Pexels and learn a whole bunch of stuff by converting it to this. So let's get to it. So right off the bat, you may notice in this video that there's sort of a warm white balance on the whole thing. And this is because I have one of those programs that tries to decrease blue light as the uh, you enter the evening time to try to you know prevent using a computer too long from keeping you awake at night. And I didn't realize it till about halfway through making through this video, and so I didn't want to recut the whole thing. So you'll see it get corrected in the middle where color will really come into play. So, but for the beginning, just ignore it. So to get started, we're going to duplicate the original image, and these are going to represent the left and right sides of the face once we process them. I'm going to use the pen tool and drawing point to point, but with Bezier curve to create that sort of center line cut that's gonna go through his face. Now, since he's looking at an angle, this isn't gonna be a perfectly straight line, and what I was doing was using reference points on the image to get a sense of where this line should flow. So the middle of the nose, the middle of the upper lip sort of divot, the uh, same kind of a divot in the chin area, the Adam's apple, the crest in his shirt, just all these different points and then trying to have the line follow that path. What's nice about using vector graphics to do this is you can fine tune the nodes at any point um, in your creation process. If you want to learn more about how to draw with the pen bezier and do these kinds of manipulations that you're seeing, I have another video where I teach how to um, draw a jigglypuff using this technique. So feel free to watch that at any point. The last bit is just making the final connections to close the vector line. You can turn on the fill to kind of see what that effect looks like and how clean the line is. Um, another method you can use is you could just freehand try to draw a selection that follows this similar path and then use edit selection uh, to refine it and get it to be the shape that you're looking for. Like I said, I prefer this method. I feel like it gives you a little bit more um, control of how the shape is going to be. And in the end, it produces a much smoother line when we ultimately do the cut, which will in fact be done with selections. So I'm gonna skip some of this uh, tedious detail adjusting because really all it is is just refining the shape. So now that we have our general vector graphic shape, what we can do is use the magic wand on that layer and create a selection. Now with this selection, we can switch to one of our other layers, do an inversion on that selection, and then delete. And what's left is only the right half of the face. So now we can pick the move tool after disabling the selection, grab that right side of the face and then just drag it over. And then what you'll see is sort of that double face representation. And I just move it over about a nose width's worth. And now turning the, so the vector graphic layer back on and dragging it underneath, maximizing its opacity, now we can see how it kind of has that real person's face cut in half kind of look. And we need to add some detail to sort of that representing the inner portions of his head part. So what follows is me making some adjustments to color as well as duplicating that vector object to create sort of like an edge as if the inside of his head is more of like a shell rather than just a solid, you know, piece of material. I later do discover that I don't really need this edge and I just end up relying fully on a gradient painted shadow. So we're going to skip some of the details of me refining this inner edge because ultimately it doesn't get used in the final image. So for this one portion of coloring the inner bevel, if you will, of the subject's head, um, I'm doing a technique that was also covered in my vector graphic video, which is um, doing 
Uh, locking transparency is what it's often called, but it's the idea of being able to paint within a restricted region. And so what I can do is use the select or use the vector graphic that I created as and using the magic wand as a selection as we did earlier. But now with just a standard paintbrush with a low hardness and you know a size of your choosing, now when I start to paint some shadows to give that edge a little bit more of a realistic blended feel into the image, I don't have to worry about my painting getting on all the other layers. It's just restricted to that one region along that colored edge. And like I said, what we'll see in the end is I'm just going to rely fully on this for that edge rather than this sort of inner darkened color. If you're finding at any point that when you're doing this kind of painting it goes a little bit too far, you can always just switch back to an eraser to pull it back. All right, so at this stage, I think we have what, at least to some convincing degree, looks like a face split in half with perhaps a hollow center. So now we're going to start applying the effects, the effects to each side of the face um, that either give it sort of an icy look or a a burning hot look, and we're going to start with the icy side, which from my perspective would be the left side. So the first step in that process is to go to artistic effects and choose colored edges. And you can use the default values that are there with the one change being to change the color to pure white. And this has the effect of wherever it finds edges, it's going to make it perfectly white. And so it kind of has a neat sort of frosting effect on this guy's hair. So next, um, we're going to adjust levels just to get the contrast a little bit back. It's you got decontrasted a little bit from that previous effect and the background got kind of washed out. And looking at it, seeing that the color is a little bit too strong and so we're going to pull it back using the vibrancy tool. When it comes to skin tones, I prefer using vibrancy because hue and saturation just seems to be a little bit too strong, and vibrancy is sort of a more subtle effect of that. The next aspect of kind of creating this cool, icy feel is to adjust the white balance so it has more of a bluer tint to it rather than this sort of warm yellow. You have to find that sweet spot because if you go too far, he's going to end up looking like a popsicle. So now as we're at that stage of really starting to play with color, this is the point when I finally realize that my screen tinting software is on. So I turn it off and then start really correcting for the icy side of his face once again. Because as you can see, I kind of went a little bit too far uh, with the blue and everything like that. So decreasing the vibrancy once again. And now we can move on to the fire side, which would be like the right side. So the first step is increasing the contrast, doing that once again with levels. Bringing up the brights is really what's going to give it that sort of glowing effect. To contrast the ice to the fire, um, once again, going back to the white balance and now sliding everything more towards the warm side since our flame is going to be more of the orangey color. These are settings that you'll just have to play with to kind of get the look you're going for. Finally, to just emphasize that contrast a little bit more, going to duplicate, and then change the blend layer to overlay, and then reduce the opacity to kind of control how strong that effect is. Now, once again, coming back to the ice layer and adjusting the bottom sliders of the layers just to kind of get that background to be pure black so that the edges of selection around the flame side kind of blend into it. So at this stage, recognizing that the left side of the face, the icy side, is sort of the cold blue sort of effect. It didn't make sense that it, the inner piece of the head would be orange in that effect, so I'm adjusting the colors of that inside the head edge to be matched more of the cold icy blue color and then this is where I realized that that inner vector graphic that represents the shadow wasn't adding value anymore so it becomes hidden and the cutout just becomes a lot darker. 
So now we're going to add some flames just to give it a more dramatic effect and some texture and make it more interesting, adding some framing around the face. Um, this can very easily be done if you have a stock image of a flame on a black background. Um, to blend it into the image, this can be very simply done by just changing the blend layer to screen. I talk about this and other types of blend layers that I like to use the most in another video where I cover my favorite blend layers, but this is a perfect example of when to use screen. When you have a bright subject that you want to blend um, that has a perfectly back background, black background. So you'll see I'm just kind of really playing with the location and orientation of the flames. At one point, I kind of consider having another flame in the background, but you'll see that eventually goes away because it just doesn't end up turning out the way I want it to. Um, but using the eraser to kind of shape it, um, making little adjustments here and there. And it's just a matter of being able to balance of adding sort of this element without taking away from the subject where the subject is the person's face and so if it's if it's taking your attention away from the person's face then it's not serving the purpose that it was intended so now that we have at least one yellow flame what i wanted to do was um, have a similar texture on the other side um, but yellow flame on the blue side didn't make sense so what we'll do is make a blue flame uh, and the way to do this um, again going back to it's all about blend layers but after achieving the orientation and the location of the flame, um, we got to duplicate that layer and make a negative image of the duplicate. So now you have a blue flame on a white background, but what we need is a blue flame on a black background. So by taking the blue flame on the white background and changing its blend layer to color, then what that'll do is it will uh, maintain the color of the top layer but the luminance of the bottom layer and so then we'll have a blue flame on a black background but if we want to be able to use screen we have to bl we have to merge those two layers together so it appears like one layer so we'll merge the two then change that combined colored blue flame on the black background to a screen blend layer and now we have the look we're going for And once again, just erasing where necessary. Um, I do a sharp edged erase near his body just to make it appear more like the flame is behind him at, at the bottom near his shoulder. Clean up some of the edges on the top. So now at this stage, it's just a matter of making minor adjustments to maintain that focus on the face. So adjusting the color uh, and the shapes of the flames, adjusting vibrancy. Um, at, a, at a final stage, really what I end up doing is just adding some vignette around the entire image. Um, what that has the effect of doing is just darkening all the corners. And I achieve this by using a gradient fill um, where the the fill pattern is black fading to transparency and i apply it in a circular pattern so then i fill it onto the image and then because i don't want to affect the top i only want to affect the bottom because that's where i feel like the most distracting elements of the flame are i use a selection to delete the top part of the vignette change the blend layer to darken and then adjust the opacity to the degree at which i want to attenuate the intensity of the flame in the front and that's it. So in summary, we used vector graphics, uh, the pen bezier tool to create sort of the shape that defined where we wanted to cut the face in half. We did some kind of color manipulations with that to sort of create the what it looks like on the quote inside of the head. Uh, we used a handful of different effects to create both the ice and the fire side of the face, the ice. Uh, being a combination of colored edges, uh, white balance, and levels, the fireside being levels, uh, different layers of contrast using um, overlay, as well as white balance to give it sort of that warm color. And then just adding the flames on the side 
using the blend layer of screen in some cases for the blue flame having to do a combination of blend layers that involved color and screen and then just making some adjustments like adding vignette to keep the emphasis of the image on the face. So I hope that video was helpful. We covered a lot of stuff and in sequence to create this, you know, graphic image. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments or if you have any suggestions for new content, put those in the comments as well. If you'd like updates, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and also check out the blog. There'll be a blog entry for this tutorial in case you want to walk through it a little bit slower or get a little bit more details on some of the effects that I applied. So otherwise, I will see you guys next time.